then I never said that Will was going to be the starter. Both of them will play if Ryan can't. We'll see how Ryan feels. He may do a little bit of work later in practice today. Um, but that's how we are. That's where we're at right now. Obviously, Will, I guess, improve uh, maybe, especially in the last week, getting some extra reps in practice. I think just getting more comfortable. I think both those those guys uh, got good work in, really good work. And um, whether it was third down or two minute uh, red zone, some of the stuff that we were able to cover last week. Leaks situational awareness or feel for the game on, on the play where he stayed in bounds, for example, at, at late in the game. You feel like he's made enough progress in that area? Well, um, <clears throat> you know, I mentioned before, I thought that that. Again, for a young quarterback, I think anyone coming off the, you know, in a backup role, you know, it probably wasn't the easiest situation. Um, but we do have to start understanding some of those things and where we're at and, you know, making great decisions and, and trying to understand that there's more to the game, right? That just the first, second, and third down, you know, things are pretty clean. And then when things go off schedule, uh, situationally, you know, we all have to be better. With those guys <clears throat> in practice this time of year, you obviously had so much time with them in the spring and summer. Just is there anything new you can see with these reps in these practices, or is it kind of the same as for them? No, I think that things change. Things are always going to change, and what they, um, how, how they execute the game plan, the um, the, the command of the huddle, the, the f formationally, operationally, uh, and then just the ability to deliver the ball on time and know where to go with the football, have an idea, anticipate throws, um, being smart with the football, taking a profit, all those things that we think, you know, lead to efficiency. In, in that being that <clears throat> case, the anticipation for, for Willis, is there something you guys can do to maybe speed up the process and maybe help him see things open before they actually open? Where, you know, you're thrown to a spot as opposed to, like, waiting for the receiver to get open? Yeah, I would say that there's things that we can do on all levels to, to help our players, and you know, we need to keep doing that. <clears throat> but for Willis specifically, is there something you know, that you can do to, to help him out? Is there something more that can be done, whether it's play calling or, or just you know, more? Play work? calling can, can help anticipation, maybe. I, I, I think when you talk about anticipation, it's uh, some uh, the timing mechanism. You know, where, where are you looking in the coverage, right? Is it man or is it zone? The receivers, you know, I, I think it is. It's a total process, right? Being able to, you know, have protection, to, to be able to, one, if it's not there on the first read, to be able to progress, uh, know, know where guys are going to be, throwing it out in front of guys, you know, allowing guys to catch a run. What's the biggest challenge for a guy who's not played in an NFL game, not basically – to be able to go out and execute uh, at the quarterback position? I don't know. I've never played quarterback, so I have to ask the guys that played quarterback and started their first game, go, you know, go play. Go, go find a way to, to help us beat the Falcons. That, that's where we're at. On the, on the both quarterbacks playing thing? I, like I'm, I'm going to focus on the Falcons. Like we're, this, this, yeah, this good. For this game, and we're going to talk play. about the Falcons, Joe. So. Why are you holding your hands like that? I'm trying to get a question in here. Well, then ask the question. Don't. No, I'm just saying, like, you look ridiculous. <laughs> just ask the question, Joe. Okay, I'll let me ask you a question. On the two quarterback thing, would that be? Against a really good defense, uh, we have to run the football, whoever plays quarterback. Okay. Whether that that's Ryan. Would series, or would that be like one guy's the starter or one guy's no, the we'll, starter? No, we'll figure out the game plan as we work through the week. Um, you know, we may run the plays in with them. Um, it could be by series, could be every, you know, two series. It could have certain things that we like. You know, we'll see where, you know, one where Ryan is and, you know, but, but again, I'm, I'm excited if Ryan can't play that, that both, you know, we'll get a look at both of those quarterbacks and, you know, we'll, we'll need both of them to, uh, to, to help us win. And, and you know, Dal Falcons are doing some, you know, really good things. Adage that if you have two quarterbacks, you don't have a quarterback. No, I don't. You know, don't buy that adage. We got we got three on the roster, and we'll see where Ryan is with his ankle, and uh, and go from there. 
Because the hip drop peg, the tackle might go ahead, Kayla. Put a lot in the Kayla, go ahead. When it comes to Desmond Ritter, um, and just in terms of how he's coming along, what, what do you see positive out of him? And then just in terms of he has had some issues with holding on to the football, and how can you take advantage of I, that? We, we have to. I mean, I think that, um, you know, he, he's made some really, really outstanding plays. Um, you know, come, I don't anticipate the, the quarterback center, you know, exchange that he had. But, you know, teams have done a good job trying to, to get the ball away from him. You know, we, we have to do a better job of that. Uh, defensively, we, we, we understand that. And you know, we've done some good things on defense. I would say that we're not, we're not turning the ball over as much as we should or attempting it. So again, he's he's made some really nice throws. He's um, he's thrown where guys can run. He's thrown good seam balls, uh, but he's also athletic and he'll take off and run and convert. Go ahead, John. You said that the hip drop tackle seems to be in the news quite a bit. It's something the league, I guess, is going to take a look at. I'm curious as somebody on the competition competition committee, your thoughts on that? And, and was that one that, that uh, injured Tannehill? In the- it, it was. It, it was, and. Um, you know, in, in the pocket. And I don't know what the answer is. I don't want players to get hurt, but I also um, want to have give defenders a, an opportunity to to make a play. Uh, it's it's hard on skill players. It's hard sometimes in space. That was not in space. And so, you know, there's going to be defenders that are smaller or bigger, uh, maybe not as fast as other players with football. I, I don't know what the answer is. I know the answer is that we, we want to try to make the game uh, as good as we can possibly make it, but but also as, as safe as possible. Just not sure what that is right now. Are you and your staff unable to discern which quarterback is better at this stage? No, I'm not able to. I, I'm you know, taking a look at, at, at two young quarterbacks, and you know, again, if Ryan is unavailable for the game, you know, take a look at both of them. Is one better than the other? Um, I don't know if I'm ready to, to, to answer that. There's always stress in getting the run game going, but is in this particular situation, is it even more important to try and help alleviate some of the stress on the shoulders of two young quarterbacks? Well, you know, whoever our quarterback is going to end up being, we will have to be able to control the line of scrimmage. Uh, they've done a nice job, a really nice job uh, against the run in the last three games. Um, you know, very good defensive front, play with technique, they play with you know, power. Um, so, yeah, that'll be, you know, I mean, that'll be critical whoever plays quarterback for us. And, you know, at sometimes, you know, we've had a, a good opportunities. We've hit some some double-digit runs. Uh, guys, are, our guys are finishing. And then, you know, other times we're just more than able to get things started in a run game. So it's a consistency thing. <laughs> Any different challenge or concern when you go against Arthur Smith and him having – been intimately familiar with how how you guys operate and, and do things. I guess no more so than uh, us having an idea of who Arthur is and what they want to do. Um, you know, he's got some good weapons on offense and and try to use the you know Bijan out of the backfield. They'll run it uh, with them. They'll throw it to him. They'll scheme some plays up. Um, you know, Drake London seems to be a receiver that's competitive and strong and you know Pitts and Johnu when they get running you know build really good speed and you know Algier runs hard and so you know, I, I think it'll just be critical that we're aware of the person different personnel that's in the game <clears throat> on what you've seen based on practice etc but given what you're trying to do as a football team shouldn't you know which one is better at this point I mean I will didn't play many preseason snaps, so I think that would be hard to determine. Uh, Malik's a young quarterback that hasn't had a whole lot of snaps, and, you know, so I don't know. I mean, it, I, you, you can say whatever you want. I don't know. I just We're just trying to figure out who's going to be available, and if that's Ryan, then we'll have a plan, and if that's not Ryan, then we'll have, you know, two quarterbacks that, you know, we'll, we'll have a, a role in the football game. Routinely and over and over and over and redundant. You know what I mean? I meant when you get down in a game and, and you have to just basically go into a passing game, a drop back passing game much sooner than you would like.
I guess to try to clarify that. Right. And right. That you had mentioned the seven step drops and the, you know, the longer development plays. And so what I was going to ask you is, you know, what the or, or the amount of guys out in the, the route. You know, I mean, we can drop back and throw it with two guys in a route. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, so it's like it's just the, the, the how you build some of these things. But with that, when you have a, you know, a rookie like, like Levis back there, like, does it come even more important to make sure you stay out of those situations? Or avoid them as much as possible. Yeah, I mean, we want to try to avoid those as much as possible. Being being down in the game and forcing ourselves to to throw, and I mean, you get into third down, and you know sometimes you, you know it's what you have to do. And so again, I just was talking about in first and second down, normal offenses. You know, there's just not a whole lot of teams uh, I, from my exposure of, of watching that uh, just routinely live in that. That's, you know, or second and long for that matter. And, you know, guys are changing their, their mentality, their coverage changes, the, the pass rush mentality changes on on second and 10, you know, versus second and two. How are Chris Moore and Josh Wiley coming out of the protocol? Uh, both, I think, are still in it just because they have to practice fully uh, and then get cleared. Uh, Chris will be out there today. I don't think Josh will be out there. Six games. How do you evaluate your own uh, pass rushing uh, and what you guys have accomplished so far? Are you happy with it, or do you want more? Uh, we hit we hit the quarterback three times the last two games, so that's that's not going to be good enough to, to affect the quarterback. How involved would you expect Terrell Edmonds to be able to be this week with Quick Turner? Uh, showed up with a fantastic attitude. Uh, played in a football game Sunday night. Showed up here ready to go. Uh, was excited, had a great attitude, did some stuff yesterday. Um, so I, I would say that if he keeps progressing like he like he has in just the short amount of time that he's been here, uh, he could potentially play. Talk about Nicholas uh, yesterday. What's the adjustment like him getting used to playing on the maybe on the left side, just from a technique standpoint? Uh, I have an opportunity to ask him uh, how he feels, but. I think that there is some certainly differences in playing one side and the other. You know, it's not like we we haven't asked them to be ready to go uh, or prepare on both sides throughout the off season or you know, training camp and his time away. Um, so again, there's some things that you, know, you got to be able to stay inside out. You got to be able to punch. You got to be able to redirect. And you know, so maybe some of the footwork is a little different, but. I, I, I'm confident that, that, that he'll be uh, ready to go. What's happened with the pass rush in these two games, Mike? I don't know. We just get, got to win. You got to, got, to, got to win. You got to beat somebody. And I mean, that's, what, that's what pass rush is. It's that's what, that's what this whole league is. You, know, you can only double team so many guys, and that's what happens. Mike, the familiarity that you have with some of the personnel that are now in Atlanta, does that help at all, or is it the, how they're being used in, in the schemes that they're playing there in Atlanta that matters more? Well, I think having familiarity, you know, helps. I mean, understanding, um, you know, what their skill set is and, and what they can do. Um, but you'll also have to, to adjust to the play based on what coverage we have or, or what they're, they're running. You know, to know that, you know, what each guy's strengths are, I think, is, is somewhat obvious. With Wiley's status, where it's at, as you just mentioned, what are you hoping to see out of some guys in the tight end room, maybe in terms of their production and, and running routes and, and things of that nature with the quarterback situation this week? Uh, tight end's job is to, to, to execute the blocking scheme when, when we call the, the run catch the ball when we throw it to them, uh, you know, be able to, you know, to get open, to, to be able to um, have some route craft when it's, you know, man coverage, to be able to get into the zone, to be able to get into seams and post safety defense, post safety zone. So have a great day. Everything's getting better. Um, you know, it's been a been a process to get to where I'm at now, but we're trending in the right direction, and everything's feeling a lot better than it did, you know, a week ago. How's it compare to to last time around? Uh, it's definitely healing. You know, I it's tough to compare exactly, right? It's a little bit different, but um, 
you know, frustrating that it happened, but you know, it's it's trending the right direction and healing. And I can tell that it's healing. It's feeling a lot better. Um, you know, every couple of days I can notice a big difference. So hope to uh, keep on the trend. Was there ever a question of surgery this time around, Brian, or, or you know, was it not severe enough? Was it no, never a question this time. Is it, I mean, basically, how different is it from last year? Same spot exactly, or is it a different, different spot a little bit? Like oh, it's a high ankle sprain, so yeah, a little bit, a uh, little bit different though, because I had the surgery on it last year, so you know the force got spread a little bit differently. But um, yeah, it's a high ankle sprain. So the surgery kind of helps if you do it again later. Then yeah, basically. What's the balance of responsibility like you this week, trying to get out there and play on Sunday, but also if not, making sure that the younger guys are as ready as possible. Yeah, doing everything I can physically to uh, to heal and, and recover, um, be on top of the game plan mentally, and then um, just helping prepare those guys in meetings, going over um, all the different looks, what we're looking for in, in the pass game, uh, the different looks we could see in, in the run game, and, and making sure we're all on the same page. Uh, what are the challenges playing with an ankle injury as far as limiting you on what you can do and kind of being yourself? Yeah, anytime you deal with an injury, you're not able to, uh, to move uh, like you want to, um, and, and that's kind of the determining factor of, of being able to play, right, is being able to, uh, to do your job effectively and, um, and keep yourself out of harm's way, being able to move enough to, to be effective and, um, and not just be a, a sitting duck back there. How about the, the push-off, which was, was the thing that you said kind of took you out of the game in terms of the mechanics of throwing? Yeah, no question. Got to be able to, uh, to push off uh, not only to, to throw, but to step up in the pocket and, and – uh, Get away from from center, all those types of things. So definitely a big part of it. What have you been able to do so far, and kind of what are the next steps as you want to progress? Yeah, just working with the rehab team in here. Uh, they're doing a great job uh, with all the modalities and, and treatments. Uh, so um, steady on that, and just going to keep keep down that path. Is that pretty much a level of frustration you have when you go through this again? Uh, definitely frustrated, right? You know, it's. Uh, not a situation you want to be in, but it's the cards that, that I've been dealt. So uh, trying to keep a positive attitude as much as I can and, and take advantage of, of every day and um, you know, physically get myself on the right track and then mentally stay engaged and, and, uh, and be ready to go when the time comes. Is it concerning also that not only a game set for Sunday, but then a short week turnaround uh, right after that Thursday in Pittsburgh? Yeah, it'll be a quick quick week next week, and we'll see uh, we'll see where we're at when we get there. Was this a hit drop tackle, Ryan? I guess in, in your opinion, I, and I wonder also, was the last time you got hurt on an ankle? Was that maybe a hip drop tackle as well? Yeah, it was definitely a hip drop uh, hip drop tackle this time. Um, kind of the same thing in in L.A. Uh, at the end of the season last year. So uh, yeah, tough tough on there. I mean, I know the NFL is considering making changes there. Is that something you think should be removed from the game, or can it be? I don't know. You know, I'd have to study it more. I know <clears throat> a lot of injuries, especially high ankle sprains, come from the, the hip drop tackle. Tackle, um, but then at the same time, you look at defensively. You know, how do you fully eliminate it from being in that position? You know, so uh, I'm probably not the guy to ask because I've I've not in the uh, on the defensive side of the ball. But uh, yeah, it's definitely you know an area where you know injuries are caused. But I, it's not an easy elimination uh, if if they were to do that. What's the progression been like as far as recovery? You went from I guess walking boot and crutches to Mike said you're on a scooter. What did you get off that and start to walk? Yeah, I was in uh, I was in a cast for a few days uh, into the weekend. Um, then I was on the in a walking boot and scooter for a few days, uh, and then uh, just just got off of the uh, off the scooter and into a shoe. You know, the suture that was like put in place in the last surgery, is that still in place doing its job effectively to your understanding right now? Yeah, yeah, no question. It's, uh, you know, I had the tight rope as part of my ankle surgery at the end of the year, so I uh, still have those cables in there, you know, doing their job. Ryan, what do you most remember from your first NFL start? What's the most difficult aspect of somebody who's never gone through that before, maybe after you go uh, It's different for everybody. Uh, mine was a long time ago. It's tough to think back. What, 12 years ago now, but um, you know it's it's a fun experience. Um, you're learning a lot. You're you're taking it all in, and uh, and trying to do your do your best. So, um, you know, every every person has to you know cross that bridge when the time comes. Ryan, in terms of Kevin Byer, just your thoughts on you know finding out he was traded, and how big is it with that leadership void in the locker room to continue to have guys step up in that? 
Yeah, no doubt going to be tough to replace Kevin, um, a guy who has meant a lot to this organization, to the city, to this locker room for as long as I've been here and, and before that, you know, so um, definitely a tough loss for us and, and tough to wrap your mind around. But um, we have great leaders in this locker room. We can hopefully um, fill that void as much as possible. It's tough, right? Like I said, you know, Kevin was such a, a good um, quality cornerstone of this locker room. But we have we have other great leaders on this team, myself included, that we can hopefully, you know, fill that that void as much as we can, and um, you know, just keep our heads down, keep working. That's all we can do at this point. How hard is it though you know, when a team does move one of its cornerstone pieces to kind of just turn around and say, okay, one of our best guys is is gone, still same expectations. Is that is that a, a challenge to do when when the, it's not like an injury it's when the team? Yeah, no doubt it's tough. No doubt it's tough. Um, but unfortunately, that's the nature of the business. And as players, um, that's our, our responsibility is to is to come to work and, and do our best to go out and play quality football and find a way to win. Um, some things are out of our hands. Um, may not like it, may not understand it, but have to control what you can control and uh, and go out and do the best job you can. Ryan, you last month, uh, Mike said you're not practicing today, but will you be out there on the field the entire time or will you get treatment or what's your, what's your plan for the day? Yeah, a little bit of combination. I'll, uh, I'll get some treatment, make sure I'm doing everything I can, and then also want to stay engaged and, and um, in tune with the game plan and uh, w with everything that we're doing out on the field. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you.